Hi, everybody. It's the Dead Air Horror Review Show, and it's your buddies, uh, Tapo and Chris. And uh, today, we wa- we watched uh, The Conjuring Universe, The Nun 2, and I was none too pleased with this movie. Oh! <laughs> Coming in there with the pun, nice. Uh, I think this movie should have just been called Generic Horror Movie 7576. Um, I don't know if you could have made a movie that was more fucking generic than this. Are you really burying that lead? So, yeah, before, that's what I do. listener, before TJ and I jump on these podcasts and start recording them, generally there's yeah. a minute to two of banter, maybe more. Yeah. And, and right before we went live in this recording, he told me how much he disliked this movie. <laughs> it's and true. I got to be a little bit worried. I mean, it got me a little bit worried because I was like, uh-oh. I actually actually enjoyed this. You really liked it? Yeah, oh I wow. Did. I hey, know. man, what I know. So I was oh, like, man. okay, this is gonna be a good podcast. I, I can't wait. Um yeah. Yeah, no, I uh well I have you had yeah, had Jesus Christ, have you seen the nun one? No, but this makes me want to watch the nun one. Really? And okay. You, I kind of feel like I've seen the nun one now that I've watched the nun two. I, well, I, I get it. Yeah, I peeked my head at some reviews of this movie mm-hmm. of the nun two, and they're like, "Yeah, it's the same movie as the first one." Okay, but I also, I also like, like I know, I I know from like the promotional material for this movie and the previous film that this comes from The Conjuring, but I don't know, I don't know that either. Like, I don't know where she's. I think she's literally just like a like a cold open character like i don't think the nun was like a featured storyline in one of those movies i think she was like again like a side like a side quest in the first conjuring movie like wasn't she oh she was i I don't even remember momentarily and then uh, no, these these fucking mainstream horror movies like they i watched so i i watched the nun two t- two days ago no i watched it yeah no i watched it two days ago mm-hmm. i've forgotten so much of this it, it's like i didn't watch it at all i swear to god like it's just, funny i was it's, hoping that you would remember because I <laughs> oh, a lot <laughs> oh yeah you're fucked no um <laughs> but like same like i i had to take a minute because i was like I've seen The Conjuring, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, we reviewed The Conjuring. Yeah. And I that was never... one of the very first podcasts we ever did. And I forgot all about that movie too. It's like these, I again, like I I just these movies, like they're so to me, they're so just like the the like Target or Walmart version of like what a horror movie is that <laughs> like they don't they don't stick with me at all. Like I, I will say that the Nun Two has some really great visuals. There's some really cool, absolutely uh, visuals. The thing that happens behind you with the books was super clever, and I really enjoyed it. But I was talking to a friend of mine and she's like, oh, yeah, that was in the trailer. I was like, oh, like, like, why is that in the trailer? Like, why is that in the trailer? It was really cool. Like, I thought that was a really innovative. Nowadays, they give everything away in the trailer. Like, you can watch an entire movie and get the best parts just from the trailer. 
well not only the best parts but i feel like in a lot of trailers that not only do you get the best parts but like you can piece together the entire plot from the trailer yeah. you know what i mean absolutely um but yeah this to me like again like i i don't even i i feel like uh the movie is very inconsistent with like the nun's powers like i don't really understand the character very well like or the demon or whatever the fuck she is and then like i don't care about like any of the characters at all like the, the movie starts out with like this kid that gets killed and you know we all know how much i love child murder like on the show but um you like i don't child murder you hate cat murder but That's i oh my god oh my god i just finished that on your gravestone i just finished the book uh yesterday called the troop and there's this ex- it's a great book by nick cutter i highly recommend it. it's horror horror novel but there's a scene where like this kid like drowns a cat and i like almost had to stop reading it i was like i can't i, I can't even deal with cat murder in a book like <laughs> it's kind of animal torture violence is just it's difficult yeah it's hard and to be clear the book isn't like all about that it's just yeah. this one it's about these kids anyway it's a great book but th- this one kid is like sadistic and you know it's an easy way to make a character evil but uh no animal anyway. violence in this film so yeah no it uh that should i would assume an extra point one to point two on your on your final score yeah so about that scene in the beginning like the kid getting murdered like i don't know who this kid is I don't know why he's scared of being in this basement. The only reason that he's scared is because there's scary music playing. And I'm like, oh, it's supposed to be scary. Like I, this movie in a lot of ways, like does things where it's just like, like it's relying on, you knowing a lot about horror movies. Like, I don't, it just like, have you ever, it. so you've never been in like a creepy basement by yourself. I mean, yeah, I get that. But like, I don't, I guess like, I guess if that's the case and that's what you're going for, I don't need the creepy music it makes it it's too much like it's like you can make i feel like you can make that scene creepy without doing the like overwrought creepy music right or like so you're saying the sound effects if anything or 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 do yeah give me like a soundscape give me give me something that's creepy in the background or like one or the other like i don't know again like the biggest problem i have with that scene and most of the scenes in this movie where characters get killed or injured is I don't know or care who any of these people are. You know, there's a point in this movie where, um, like the nun from the previous, the the good nun, like the uh, Avenger fighter nun, um, she like goes to the this monastery in France or whatever, and I was so confused because I didn't realize they were two separate locations because I just like was told like the characters just all blended together and I was like, yeah. oh, they're 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 in two separate places. It's like, oh, okay. Also. <laughs> Also, the lead actress is uh, Vera Farminga's daughter because nepotism, which is great. No, it's not. I looked. Oh, at I th- thought it was. No, believe it or not, they're sisters. They're like 20 years removed. Oh my God, that's not her daughter? No. Wow. No, and um, I thought she did a bang up job in this movie. I, I mean, she's fine. It's just one of those things where it's like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> you know, like a lot, of, a lot of these movies, especially with the younger actors, I feel like they have they feel the need to overact and overdo it and over. I didn't get that sense from her. She was, I mean, she was fine, but to me again, like she was just like a blank slate. Like I, I had a hard time identifying or connecting with like any of the characters in this movie. Yeah. Like at at a certain point I felt like, I mean, obviously like you're, you're the, the plot of this movie is ridiculous, but like, you know the vatican or whatever knows that like basically the devil is like on the loose and they're like here what these two nuns go fight her it's like huh yeah. like wait what like i don't know like there, there uh, were several moving parts that i did find confusing i'll admit or just unnecessary yeah um, go ahead one of them being maurice okay i know he was in the first movie he yeah i yeah i don't know and he's like possessed sometimes not other times and it seems it, it was confusing to me as to why he, they needed him to be possessed in the film to like carry. I yeah. wish I could tell you. Yeah, I didn't understand it either. So, and also, like, I mean, again, that goes back to what I was saying before. Like, the nun's powers are like so inconsistent. Yeah. Like, at, like she can levitate people and make them explode, and then like, but then she's got to possess Maurice. 
and Maurice has got all her powers, but then he can just get like knocked out with a pipe. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of like there's a lot of parts in this movie that don't make any sense. And it's just like I know it's supernatural and whatever, but like it's like things happen because the script needs to happen. You know what I mean? Like it was like I I know again even with like supernatural movies or supernatural horror villains, they have to have like boundaries and rules or it doesn't work it, yeah. to me. It's like, and also to go back to my previous statement about um, not being able to identify or, you know, really get into any scene. If you just let the nun have like any power she wants or whatever the fuck it was, it also eliminates the tension in any scene. Cause I don't know. It's like, oh, if this happens and this will happen, like, I don't know. She's going to do whatever the hell she needs to do at any given time. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. It, it's she's just... fucking Satan. She can do whatever the hell she wants. I mean, okay. <laughs> like, your power but then... is that you're Satan and you can pretty much destroy. But then, like, the eyes, but then the eyes are going to kill her. But then she gets the eyes and then that doesn't really do anything. And it's like, and then she's killed by wine, which is stupid. Like, and also kills her descendants. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I gotta be honest, man. Like, I kind of, I checked. I, it took me two sittings to watch this. I checked out of it pretty hard. Really? By the time I got to the end, I was like, thank God. I think <laughs> like the second time I, I, so I, I watched about an hour of it, and then I like stopped and did something else because I was just really bored. And then when I watched it the second time, and admittedly. This may, this may, and I will, I will put it out on Front Street. This may disqualify my review. Uh, the second time I watched it, I watched it on my computer, and I watched it at one point five speed with the subtitles on. So <laughs> you're cheating. You're cheating. Yeah, I was like, now I gotta get. Is to go back and watch it at half speed. I oh, <laughs> yeah, what do like the the sun take? Oh, like you gotta watch every movie super <laughs> slow. Self immolation. Uh, but yeah, I so the first half of the movie I watched in normal speed, but I was I had a hard time paying attention to it. The second half I watched I watched with all my attention at one and a half speed. <laughs> hey, at least you got through the movie. Um, I I finished. I always finish. I mean, you know what's amazing about this the nun in particular that's behind you? Can mm. you scooch out of the way for a second. The actual actress. These yeah, aesthetics. she actually looks not like. Yeah, no, I looked her up. But yeah, without the makeup, like she's she's got a really perfect I mean, casting. Beautiful, she, but yeah. she's, she's got a very eerie. Like, well, I was. Look I, think we, I think we talked about this with um, Evil Dead Rise, where the actress oh, yeah. that plays the mom, and yep. I, again, I'm not. She's gorgeous, but like she's got a very angular face. Yes, and I think like when you add makeup to like super angular faces, and I don't know why, That's but it, I, well, her uh, the the nun, the evil nun, she reminds me a lot of Marilyn Manson, and he's uh, got like a long angular face too, and he used to always, obviously, he used to like accentuate that, make himself look creepy, and like I think it's just a smart play, like, and again, like. I, I didn't care for the movie, but like that design is pretty cool. Like she looks yeah. cool. I mean, if anything, like again, it, it to me it speaks to like the generic thing because it's just like oh, evil nun. It's like evil nun, evil clown. It's like very like yeah. I don't know. We've seen it before. You know what I mean? Like I, uh, I, I like really enjoy any kind of supernatural elements, movies, whatever, what have you that involve. Uh, the church well obviously yeah i i, I the, like it too yeah, yeah i this this it, i thought like really did the supernatural thing justice by making it extra this character the nun for me is so incredibly creepy um just thinking about her with the glowing yes. eyes and like popping out she didn't even have to do much just right. I mean, she's creepy. She's got a great look. I'll give yeah. you that. Like, yeah. again, she is a creep in 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 a vacuum. Is right. very like you see a picture of her, you're like, oh, that's fucking scary. You, even you see her in the movie, and it's like, oh, it's but like to me, and again, like I, you know, obviously we all have our opinions, but like I think like the movie stuff, like it, you remember when we talked about Saw? Yeah. And my biggest problem with Saw is that Saw constantly has to st I mean, not the last one we watched because it was hilarious and I loved it. Yeah. But <laughs> Saul has to constantly stop to remind you you're watching a silly movie. 
and that's what this does like there's mo there's so many moments in this movie where like i agree like the atmosphere is creepy the character is creepy but like it's overwrought with just like silly crap and to me that like takes me out of it it immediately like diminishes the scare i'm not scared anymore because i'm this is just a dumb movie you know what i mean like i don't know that's just me yeah i i was just the opposite like usually i don't fall for those jump scares but right. maybe there's just some all the jump scares in this movie god i'm glad there's you brought so it up and they, they almost it's... every single one of them got me. I was shocked because usually Bro, all for that. But I... there's something that really resonated with this in particular that just creeps, like just looking behind you and seeing that image of that nun freaks me out. Like I hate it. And yeah, I, but those, that's why I enjoyed this jump movie. Scare, those jump scares just never stopped. I was like, oh my uh, God, can you calm was... down with it? And again, I it's cheap. It. It's cheap. It. It's very cheap. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I agree with you. I, in theory, love horror movies that deal with religion, but it's funny because I think about it and like most of them are bad. Like I just watched a movie a few weeks ago. I didn't think I talked about it on the show. It's called Consecration. And it's another like nun possession movie. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to love it, but it's awful. And like, I remember like Stigmata is another movie that I really wanted to love way back in the day. I think it came out like the like late 90s. It's terrible. Like the Exorcist is good, Exorcist three is good, and that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> but I watch them. I watch tons of them. I, I've I, I, actually there's another there's another really great one. It's like more of a classic movie, but Ken Russell's The Devils is oh. fantastic. Um, like there there are more that I can't I just can't think of off the top of my head. I just feel like a lot of times it's a swing and a miss. Like. A lot of the exorcism movies are bad. Like, not the exorcist, but, well, a lot of those movies are bad, too. But, I mean, the ones that are, like, like the last exorcism is not very good. Um, that taking of Deborah Logue that everybody likes oh, yeah, so much yeah, yeah. is not good. That one scene is good, yes. Mm -hmm. But I can watch a gif of that one scene. I don't need to watch the whole fucking movie. Uh, I don't know. But, I, in theory, it, it's great. Like, I love the idea. And there's something, like, there's something really... I don't know. There's something really grounded and interesting about like religious horror and like because I guess I don't know, maybe I'm looking too far into it, but like to have faith, right? You have to believe in shit that's outside of like our existence, right? To like believe in God and the higher power, you have to believe in like outer worldly things. So it's not that far of a reach to also believe that there's going to be like an opposite side to all that. So I think like that kind of grounds it into some kind of reality. I don't know if that makes any sense. I totally. But anyway, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Also, not I'm not religious like in the slightest. So I. Oh, don't be shy, TJ. He's. I'm not. I. Uh, I mean, I used. I used to be. Is. Bro, I used I'm to be Scientologist. I I used to be a crusty edge lord atheist and thank god i grew out of that phase and i don't care i just don't i'm apathetic towards religion now but yeah yeah because nobody needs a edge lord reddit apath or uh atheist anymore that shit listen you can't see it but underneath that piece of tape on tj's sweatshirt is what would you do yeah yeah www.jd.jd whatever <laughs> Uh, anyway, we got about three minutes left. Do we want to do scores? Do you want to say anything else? I've kind of bullied you on this episode, and I feel bad. Yeah, I feel like I need to go cry because <laughs> I, I we can I, like different things. It happens. We've we've uh, had we've uh, we've clashed we've clashed before. Yeah, I I the thing is, I agree on you with all the points you've made. Right, but you still enjoy it. It's fine. It still happens. Like it. I I I liked the like like you said the cheap parts the the jump scares. In fact, I was just about to say I think they probably had more in there. <laughs> Somebody was probably like, "This is too much." The whole like, movie had a whole new storyline. The, the, the whole movie is jump scares. It's like a guy. <laughs> it's it's like blast beats and heavy metal. Like it's just like jump scares. Like <laughs> none, 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 none. Yeah, everywhere yeah. you go, none. Um. I, I'm gonna give this a seven point three. Nice. And you? Uh, it is a two point one. It is. I I hated this movie. Uh, I I really like. I know we're gonna end up veering back into like the world of like 
very mainstream horror but man i feel like every time we go down this road it's just like oh uh-huh. <laughs> like i like i mean i like all stretches of things but man there's something about this era like the current era we live in of like ultra mainstream stuff and i know people in the comments oh you know midsummer's mainstream and blah blah no it's not it, it's it you know exactly you know exactly what i'm fucking Lord coming out no 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 when i say mainstream horror movies it's stuff like this and you know you goddamn know exactly what i'm talking about <laughs> like and i you know i'm not saying that fucking a24 movies are fucking indie or whatever but there is a vast difference between this and between like it follows you know what i mean so uh it's like a 2.2 uh real quick i guess we should say because we already know what we're gonna watch next week right yep uh we are stay we're doing theme a theme it's christmas time we're gonna do uh, Christmas winter movies. Hopefully, I survive. And did you just puke a little when you said Christmas? A little bit. I hate Christmas. Um, but we're gonna do uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, eighties eighties Santa slasher movie, which I've never seen, but it has a wonderful cover of Santa with an axe oh, sticking yeah. out of a chimney. I can't wait to watch it. So yeah, all right, everybody. that's the show. Cheers. Thanks, everybody. Love you. Love you. Yeah. <laughs>